So this is David with Turnkey ISP, and I'm at the CCA convention with Teltec Group, and they've got this drone that provides 5G LTE service in emergency applications. We've got Fraser here. And Thomas, Thomas Pryor. And Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, tell us about this drone. Well, thanks, David. So the concept here is this drone is designed, as you said, to provide emergency communications in a disaster where the normal conventional networks are no longer available. Uh, this drone is custom designed for this purpose. It actually breaks down into a very small size, can be shipped on a commercial flight, but it can lift at least 25 pounds of payload. The concept is it does, runs on this tether, and this tether allows it to stay aloft indefinitely. Inside this tether is enough copper to power the drone and keep it in flight, as well as power the payload. Also inside this tether are six strands of fiber optic. So we got one of which fiber is, optic right here. And there's the, there's five payload strands. This is one to fly the drone. The drones fly by wire only. And so then the tether uh, is 500 feet long, which allows this drone to stay aloft indefinitely up to 500 feet, carrying a payload of up to 25 pounds. This particular payload is two e femto uh, cell radios, which would cover at least a 10 square mile with cellular service in the event of a disaster. For a few hundred subscribers. Yes, few and you could devices. actually fly more powerful radios. These ones are nice and light and they're called e femtos This is really good for a first response when you're primarily serving a community of first responders. Maybe there's an evacuation and they just need support. We can actually fly small cell radios as well and provide essentially service to a community uh, for the duration of the flight, which is can you show how, how it swaps out there? How you can just yeah, these are a dovetail, change the, change they're, the payload? They're a dovetail mount for payload change. So you just basically slide the radio off like that. You take another one and slide it in. And so this services a few hundred users with, uh, with data and voice. Yes. And then you can use a small cell and, and service a few thousand. Correct. Okay, and then it's, it's, it's fed with five strands of fiber and then one control strand for, right. for operating the drone. And it goes 500 feet yes. uh, off this spool, this spool, which has the fiber and it has the copper Correct. power this tether uh, goes on the spool. bundled together. It's 500 feet long. This particular one is reflective. Mm -hmm. So if there's light shining against this, it glows really, really bright. Okay. Our newer ones are actually a bright orange as well. And then, so then we have the breakouts for the different fibers and hardened uh, fiber up connectors and the high voltage connection. On the drone, this is the air side power supply. We run extremely high voltage up the tether. That's how we get, you know, 4,000 watts of power up such a small cable. And then this steps it down to power the small batteries in the drone. The batteries are only to land in the event of loss of tether. And we power all of the uh, different uh, types of payload. And we have 48 volt, 12 volt, and 5 volt DC breakouts for powering whatever you have. And then tell us about this box right here. Okay, so this is the ground power unit. So what you feed this one with is 240 volts, minimum 20 amps. So an on-site generator or ground power plugs into this. This up charge up, steps that up to very high voltage and connects out this, this connector here to the tether running extremely high voltage. Also, you plug into here, there's a media converter in here that you plug in, and this actually gives the drone uh, connectivity for fly-by-wire. Now, this drone is designed to be very simple, single-purpose drone, so that it uses a tough pad, not joysticks, not throttles, and you literally, once you've calibrated the GPS and you put, assemble the drone, which takes about five minutes, then you power up the pad, you plug it into this Ethernet connector, and you push launch. The initial thing it does is it climbs up in a cylinder. It will not violate, so it, it stays in a certain 10-meter diameter cylinder and rises to 30 feet and waiting for a command. Then you use the pad, a slide bar on the pad, to take it up to whatever feet, up to 500. And it also has a GPS map on it. You can drag and drop and move it around an obstacle, so you can move it horizontally and vertically. And there's two ways to bring it down. If you say land, it'll go down wherever it is. So if you've moved it, say, 150 feet to the left, it'll land there. If you say return, it'll bring itself back down onto the edge pad. So uh, the, the basic application is for emergency where uh, there's no connectivity, no cell service, and uh, it's a replacement for a cow tower. So this is a, basically a cell phone tower that you can ship in a box. Correct. 
and it ships in this box right here. And so um, it can fit on a commercial flight. There's three things you have to ship. That's the box that the whole drone fits into. This is a hardened case that covers off for the power unit. And we have a custom built case for the tether. Those three boxes can be put on a commercial flight and sent across the country in a matter of hours. They can be taken in the back of a SUV or a pickup truck to the site. And then you simply connect power to this, connect some kind of ground, some other kind of network connectivity, satellite dish. If there's still broadband on the ground available, you can plug into that and that ties you into whatever network you want to use and then you put the drone in the air. Uh, the difference between this, say, and a cow truck, which I've deployed for years in my career, is you got up to 500 feet, where you can go up mm -hmm. to the antenna, you can go horizontally and vertically to get around obstacles. You can get into places that are very hard to get into with a large cow, because you can use a four-wheel drive or hardened vehicle to get into the site, and you can you know, leave this in the air for indefinite amount of time, because it's running off the tether. And the other big advantage here, so it's, it's small, lightweight, travels easily, easy to set up, no engineering, right. um, and basically push button Correct. connectivity. Correct. Our customers told us they want the flight management to be simple. Our first generation had the joysticks and throttles and lots of buttons on the controller. They said simple. So that's what we've, it's a single purpose. It gets up and holds it in position. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had it in like 20 knot crosswinds in June at a, at a trade show and it didn't even move. Yeah, this is incredible. All right, well, thank you, Paige.